Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the Lemon Keypad Project. So check out the learn.adafruit.com. Our guide just got published, so you can check it out. If you'd like to build your own Lemon Keypad, we have the code, the circuit diagram, all the assets and step-by-step -step instructions on how to build your own. I have a link in the description, so you can check that out. Uh, but I wanted to talk about like where the idea came from. It wasn't one of the things where I'm like, I'm gonna make a Lemon Keypad. It did not start that way. Uh, so I kind of want to show you folks like where this kind of came from. So in Fusion, I had the idea to do something with path on pattern. This is a way to uh, create a custom unique path and then apply a pattern uh, to it. In this case, I wanted to use Cherry MX switches. Uh, so I have the model um, from GrabCAD. It's a, uh, a Cherry MX switch, but it could also be a Kale switch. So if you folks want to do some projects with a Cherry MX or Kale switch, check out the link in the description. You can download this, uh, this really nice model of the, of the Cherry MX slash Kale switch. So once I brought that in, I created this, um, this sketch and I used the spline tool to kind of create a swirl. And if you ever use the spline tool, you know it's a, it's a little bit of a tricky thing to mess with these handles, but you can, you can massage them to create like smooth organic shapes like this swirl. So uh, once I, I did that, I figured, let me see if I can do a pattern on path, which you totally can do. It works really well. You have a lot of control to do something really unique. And this is kind of what I came up with. Um, it's, it's neat that you can uh, kind of massage and adjust the, uh, the path and like the path on pattern will kind of adapt to it, which is kind of neat. Um, but, and it's, it also had this kind of a silly pun, like there's some cherries. There's a swirl, you got a cherry swirl. I didn't really end up going with this layout because it's just too far out there. It's more artistic than, uh, than actual functional. So then I, I thought about, well, it kind of looks like a circle. What about circular keypads? I don't see many circular keypads with Cherry MX switches. How about we do that? So I started searching around on Google and I, came, and I found some interesting products that are circular keypads. This one here is, is meant for like, um, I guess safes or, or security locks. Um, it's got this 12 kind of segment keypad with some buttons in the center. It's, it's more of a touch screen though, but I like the layout. I also found this cool like virtual keys layout um, idea for like maybe an Oculus Lift riff or uh, some sort of VR stuff. Um, and you can see how the segments are, are a little bit different. You have like 12 on the outside or maybe it's six on the outside and whatever five on the inside. Kind of neat. Here's another view, another image of that security dial just kind of looking at it. And then like, this is like a fun toy that my nephew has. I really, I, I just saw it in the corner of my eye. I was like, that's a circular keypad. Let me take a picture of it. So that was inspirational too. And then uh, while you're searching for circular keypads, of course, you're gonna come up with Japanese keyboards, right? Huge circular disc. Um, but what I don't like about it is like too many keys and there's still kind of these square keycaps. I really wanted to do something with different shaped keycaps. Like you just keep, keep seeing the same shaped keycaps, right? And then I found this kind of gamer keypad. It, it was actually a Kickstarter that was somewhat of a scam. Um, I'm not much of a gamer, so I didn't go with this route, but I still saved this as an inspirational image. Like I thought that was neat, um, but yeah, it's a bit of a scam. Uh, and then this came up, it's like, it's just a product image of cherry or kale switches. It's just funny that like they they orient the photo orients them in a circular. So I guess that came up somehow. Then I found this very strange, bizarre keyboard. It's called the B Raider, which is kind of neat. I don't know what it's used for. It's kind of a tense, but very unique, very interesting. Maybe it's for editing or something. I'm not sure. Uh, and then I found this kind of phone, this kind of rotary. Then the center it looks like it's a rotary dial. And then on the outside, you have these 12 keys. But I like the keys because they have these really sweet curves that are kind of all swooping. It almost looks like a fan blade or something. So that's kind of where I wanted to go. So more key, more circular keypad, right? And then I found this calculator, super cute. You got 12 keys on the outside. And on the inside is like four functions um, for, for a calculator. So I thought that was really clever. And I kind of wanted to go that route. So that's that's really where I left off. Like, I'm gonna just kind of do this layout. 12 keys on the outside, and maybe I'll do something on the inside. So in Fusion, I came up with this. It's got those 12 keys, and it's pretty simple. I got up to the point where like, I figured out this is where I want my microcontroller to be, their feather, and this is where I want the keys to be. But I didn't quite figure out, well, what can I do in the center? It's a bit of wasted space. Maybe I could put a, a, um, a rotary dial, but 
it's just making it a little bit more complicated. I wanted to simplify this and keep this as simple as possible because it's it's helpful when you need to document something and film it and make instructions. It's better if it's a simple project. Um, so I, I kind of figured, all right, well, let me reduce this from 12 keys to six keys. Let me see if I can compress everything down. As I kept uh, fitting it further and further and compressing it down, the uh, the keycaps themselves, like at some point, these fillets here on the edges ended up looking like a triangle. It ended up looking like this. So as I kept playing with the scaling of it, it ended up looking like this fruit. And that's really where the idea came from. It was like, okay, this looks like a lemon or an orange or some sort of fruit with these little segments and the segments can be the keys. So that's kind of where it came out of. As I kept cutting things away, the shape kind of presented itself. And then it got me thinking like, oh, I remember seeing some a project from three years ago on Instructables of a food keypad. This is a rad pizza slice. It's using arcade buttons and uh, an Arduino, but it, it's, it's still got that kind of concept of being a cute, editable, like it's a food keypad. So I thought this is perfect. Like this is where I want to go. I want to do a lemon. So that's really where it came from. If you want to check out the pizza slice that I got a link to from Broken Antler Workshop here. Um, but yeah, it's it's just kind of funny how it, 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 it ended up becoming what it is just from making it simpler and uh, chain, you know, applying some colors to it, and it really looks like a, like a fruity lemon. So I hope that's inspirational. Um, I will do another layer by layer on kind of breaking down the CAD stuff. There's some interesting techniques that I think folks could use, but uh, this one was just more of like a quick, uh, here's where an idea can come from and where it ended up. So let me know what you think about this style of video. If you wanna see more kind of where do your ideas come from? I'd like to maybe try this again. But uh, hey, I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to make a lemony day. <laughs> Bye, folks.